excited Lester McKee stormed into his storm room and shouted, We must win million dollars. Caught by surprise, his friend now had to listen to what caused McKee's excitement, the Netflix prize. Yeah, nowadays this is a well-known tech company represented by the letter N in the Dear to Developers Hearts acronym FANG. But back then it was nothing else but a DVD rental service. In October 2006, Netflix announced a competition with a lucrative prize, million dollars for, well, an algorithm. The goal was to improve their recommendation system so that the accuracy would increase by 10%. So the news about the Netflix prize spread like a forest fire. It was picked up not only by small data geek forums but by the mainstream media far beyond the US. A million dollar prize of course played its role but this was not the main thing that attracted the top industry professionals from around the world. Furthermore, the winners didn't actually spend the prize money. But more on that towards the end of the story. True data lovers were attracted by the data itself. Why? Well, there was something about the politics of Netflix CEO back then, Reed Hastings. The thing is that unlike some corporations whose most valuable resource is the data collected on the users, therefore they keep it in secrecy, Reed on the contrary decided to give away a data set of around 100 million ratings of nearly 17,000 films made by more than 480,000 users of Netflix. Despite it seems like it was not too long ago, a lot of technologies that we take for granted now simply did not exist back then. Just try to imagine these sort of numbers back in the days when smartphones, big data and every toaster with access to the internet were not a thing yet. So what was the point? Like I've said, back then Netflix wasn't a film streaming service. It was delivering films to the customers via the post and then those who felt like it could rate the film or two. That was the main idea behind the Cinemach, the recommendation system employed by Netflix in the year of 2000. Something like, if you have enjoyed film A, then you will most likely enjoy film B, because, well, because it has a similar plot, same actor or some other common trait. But the problem is that by following the same logic, they could just start recommending movies from the same category or the same genre. And if the customer for some reason once ordered a C-grade toilet comedy, well, then this sort of stinky stuff is everything that one could expect from the recommendation then. Of course, the management wouldn't be happy with this approach, so this is supposed to be something a little bit more sophisticated. However, very soon they've realized that they can't achieve this 10% improvement goal with just the forces of the Netflix internal team and took the decision to conduct an open competition. It's worth mentioning that back then Netflix was using a 5 star rating system as opposed to their thumbs up thumbs down system and other implicit metrics and behavior that online streaming services gives them and that would indicate whether the user liked the movie or not. By the way if you haven't rated this video with your thumbs up now is the right time to do so. So when the competition kicked off, motivated to win a million dollar prize, Lester McKee joined an army of 30,000 contestants in the competition that will change the tiny world of data science. From an early age, fairy tales and Hollywood promotes this image of a hero, and often case a lonesome hero, who has discovered some unbelievable powers and is going to crush the competition against all odds, win the trophy and all that jazz. Sometimes this character is even called the chosen one. However, in the real world everything is slightly different and this competition wasn't an exception. Instead of a sudden prodigy, teams of uber geeks from the top universities, the whole R&D department from at t and even Jeffrey Hinton, the creator of AlexNet and other well-known stuff, whose students are the AI stars themselves, including Jan LeCun, Ilyas Skiva and Ruslan Salahuddinov, founders of OpenAI the company that delivered GPT-3, among other cool things. By the way, Hinton's ancestor was George Boole, a mathematician that gave us 
Boolean logic or Boolean algebra as some might know it. So in other words, it wasn't just a competition among some of the best brains of the industry. It was a world championship finals. Besides, similar competitions held prior to the Netflix prize, like the one from Ansari, where they wanted people to build a multi-purpose spaceship in exchange for $10 million. They required some really specific set of knowledge and access to some rare tools. But to participate in the Netflix competition, all you needed was just a computer, preferably with an internet connection, and your brain. Gina Keating, the author of the book about Netflix, described Hastings, then CEO of Netflix, who has actually established this competition as a Willy Wonka of the high-tech era, who let the curious nerds into his digital chocolate factory. Furthermore, the whole discipline of machine learning was not as mainstream as it is today, and was something new to explore even to the people with the brilliant academic background. In other words, not all contestants were too closely familiar with machine learning algorithms, but they were into data, lots of data. And improving the Cinematch algorithm by another 10% wasn't as trivial as it might sound. If it would have been so simple, they could have just rung Jeffrey Hinton and gotten the solution. Even the team from the AT&T research department, literally guys with the resources of a company that lays transatlantic cables connecting continents, couldn't come up with a solution from the get-go. So what actually made this challenge so difficult? Well, besides the immense size of a dataset, the data was pretty uneven. You see, some users could have rated just 9 movies, which was the minimum threshold for getting into the dataset, while others could have rated as little as 900 films. But it wasn't just the users with the different numbers of films rated. The film's ratings were also influenced by the genre, time of the year, popularity and other factors. For example, a major blockbuster could have been ordered many times, and this of course would have impacted the number of times Times it was rated, while some unknown art house drama could have been seen just by a dozen of snobs in a whole decade. Besides, human psychology could have impacted the ratings as well. Perhaps after a hard day at work, somewhere in the middle of the week, we might be stricter with other people's work, while when we are about to hit the weekend, we anticipate a well-deserved rest and therefore we could be more generous with positive ratings. Long story short, this challenge was the mother of all data science challenges, but one unexpected coincidence was about to change the competition's leaderboard and perhaps even the history of data science. Someone known by the name of Simon Funk was about to board a flight to New Zealand when his mate sent him an email about the Netflix prize. By the way, Funk was already working on the application of singular value decomposition, and Simon improved the SVD method, and this variation became known as the Funk SVD. The core idea was around decomposing the original ranking matrix M into two components, P and Q. Singular values are folded into these matrices, and the method uses the stochastic gradient descent optimization to minimize the error on the known values. Anyway, this confirms the idea that it is important to be in the right place at the right time, because if Simon Funk would have been born in medieval times, he would have probably been burned for witchcraft. But in 2006, this witchcraft has helped him to get right onto the fourth place of the leaderboard. However, this couldn't guarantee him a prize because he was still far away from 10% improvement. But eventually, Simon got bored with the challenge, so he just shared his solution and it was then implemented by almost everyone in this competition. Certainly, Simon's solution has helped to advance towards the coveted 10%, but there was still a wide field to cross. Netflix has issued some minor prizes to the winners of 2007 and 2008 to make sure the competitive spirit won't just simply die out, but the most stubborn participants knew that they won't stop until they capture the flag. Was the final prize eventually taken? Was the victory achieved because of some fantastic insight or was it a result of diligent, relentless work? Well, Belcore team, led by Chris Volinsky and consisting of the AT&T engineers, 
realized that it won't be able to succeed in its present composition. They need some fresh blood and brains to join them. This is why they were reinforced with the engineers from USA, Canada, Austria and Israel and rebranded themselves as Balcor Pragmatic Cows. And what has followed has decided the outcome of the competition. This move by Belcor has actually made Lester McKee and his Dino Planet team realize that they must also reinforce themselves with new specialists. That's why they have united with several other teams to create the Ensemble, a super team consisting of 30 exceptional brains. It seemed that this must lead them to success, but then something happened. You see, when one of the teams comes up with a solution capable of surpassing the 10% threshold, Netflix sends the notification to other teams that they have just 30 days left to beat this result, otherwise the winner is announced. McKee's team was a few steps away from the breakthrough when they received the email, the solution from Belcor Pragmatic Cows has made it through the 10% threshold. Now, they have just 30 days to beat the score. Members of the Ensemble were hammering away from dusk till dawn, but the time was short. They knew that they were not so far behind from Belcor. However, they had no idea how far behind they were. It was like trying to chase someone in a thick fog when you are not even sure if you are rushing in the right direction. Finally, a member of McKee's team wrote him that one of the files on their server might actually contain an algorithm capable of beating a 10% accuracy score, but when Lester requested the name of the file, silence was the answer. At first, he was just glaring at the monitor, waiting for that spark, an email to come through. Then he chaotically began to open their files one by one, trying to find the right solution. And only after the deadline, he would discover that his comrade just lost the internet connection. In the end, McKee was able to allocate the right file and made his final submit. Later, he will remember this with irony, saying that these 20 minutes were worth a million dollars. Why? Because he was 20 minutes late and on October the 18th, Belka Pragmatic Chaos officially won the competition. In reality, this competition was never about money. And right from the start, it was clear that its participants are well-formed specialists that are more interested in improving the industry, their own image, and of course, in the data. It didn't come as a surprise that the prize money was given to the charity organization that provides STEM education for underprivileged communities. And it's kind of hilarious, but Netflix didn't actually use the winning algorithm because later they have introduced their streaming platform and ratings made by users became not so critical because from there on, Netflix could collect more reliable data, watch time, part of the day or day of the week when the movie is receiving the most attention, repeats and so on. And much like the story of Laszlo Hanitz who spent 10,000 bitcoins on two pizzas, the negative financial outcome does not undermine the overall positive legacy. Yes, perhaps in Laszlo's case it could have been wiser to keep the coins considering that he could now possibly buy a pizza company or two with them, but without this proof of concept that you can actually buy physical products with this digital currency, it is possible that Bitcoin wouldn't be as valuable today, remaining one of these brilliant ideas that never took off. In the case of Netflix and their price, this made possible the whole lot of competitions being started by other tech companies like Yahoo and Zillow. For example, the Heritage Health Prize was offering $3 million for an algorithm capable of predicting the probability of the duration of hospitalization. It may be that because of this story, the field of machine learning and data science attracted so many new followers and also made other companies realize that being able to interpret the data can significantly improve their business processes and revenue. And of course, it made possible the foundation of a platform called Kaggle, where everyone can take part in the competition to win money or some reputation points. 
It is a pity that because of some short-sighted guys that published a paper proving that the data provided by Netflix was not properly anonymized and other greedy folks making money suing companies, Netflix has shut the competition down after settling the lawsuit. But some people taking part in this competition were so impressed by the company's visionary approach that they bought stock in them, admitting that this was one of their best investments. Thank you for investing time to watch this video, which I think deserves your thumbs up. And you could also leave a comment. This will enormously help to promote it. And please subscribe to this channel so you won't miss any more stories behind tech and business. Cheers. That was V. Thank you and goodbye.